Hey, I'm Sean, and um, I'm here at the shop right now that's working on my truck. I haven't made a video for a long time, and uh, I'm just going to give you guys uh, kind of a sneak peek of what's going on with my truck. So, this is the, uh, the mess <laughs> of what my truck looks like. Um, you can see the engine's still intact. You can see that it isn't my Caterpillar painted engine. Uh, this is still my motor. So we haven't replaced anything yet. But uh, kind of give you a little look of what my engine looks like. So this is with 5,000 hours and uh, 148,000 miles. Pretty close. Uh, there is not any kind of sludge, any buildup in there. Um, if you look at all the rollers, uh, all my roller tips are all beautiful. The cam journals are all in great shape. This is the problem head. Um, everything's testing out oh, just great. Everything looks great. Uh, problem has been identified of something I'll show you in a second. So uh, here you got the uh, centrifugal force oil separator. Uh, that's what that thing is there. People always want to know what that looks like. Uh, but that's it. Inside my intake there, you can see the EGR flap. So, yeah, one good thing is you can see that this shop didn't break any of my uh, injector feed tubes. The dealerships are breaking these, and it's a standard procedure. Those guys have to replace them whenever they touch them. Uh, you still see my intake's nasty, but I'm working on a fix for that. So, yeah, this is what's involved uh, when this part fails. Uh, this isn't something that you guys can fix in your backyard on a weekend. This needs to be taken to a shop, professional shop, where they know what they're doing. There's just too much work involved in, uh, in what part fails on these engines. So... Uh, here you got my intake cam pulling apart, pulled out, and this is the exhaust cam. This is the problem right here. So I'll let you look at my journals. They're they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, especially for this many miles, looks really nice. The intake and exhaust. So this is the problem head. So when I purchased my second motor, most of you guys know that I purchased my second engine and when I first bought my truck in June um, the forum was getting filled with people with the same repetitive problems over and over and over and uh, at first we all thought that it had to do with a uh, a bolt that held the uh, gear on for the high pressure pump we thought that it was backing off allowing this tooth to slip and uh, that was causing the, uh, in the valve train to get out of time and the valves were coming through and either disintegrating into the piston or um, destroying the, the valves. So, you know, since all of our trucks were under warranty, um, a lot of information wasn't being disclosed and uh, no aftermarket shops or diesel shops were having to tear these apart. So nobody really knew yet. Well, since I'm at 148,000 miles, um, my fate happened just like everybody else is going to have happen as well. So the technician, when he tore apart the engine, um, he said that this bolt was tight enough that he had to use his impact gun to just loosen the bolt up. So uh, due to stress from either the high pressure fuel pump or from excessive uh, crankcase pressures, one of the two components allowed the mating surface here from the gear to allow this gear to slip. There are no, there's nothing holding this on other than just pure tension. So uh, when you use this truck as a diesel, this is a diesel engine. I mean, it's this is not a commuter engine. This isn't something you use to commute back and forth to work. Uh, this this truck here, uh, I pull a 7,000 pound trailer maximum, and uh, you know, I, I baby her, I, I never run her over 3,000 RPM. The one time that I hit 3,400 RPM, which is still not even redline, uh, produced enough pressure that uh, this, this ended up spinning. So, 
Uh, this shop is working on a solution to permanently fix it. As it is right now, I don't have any kind of... Um, I mean, there's, there's just nothing to prevent this engine from having this happen again. Um, these guys could just replace my motor with my brand new engine, but that's not the solution. The solution is coming up with a way to fix this permanently so this doesn't happen again. These guys seem to have an idea of how to fix it permanently. If they do, then I don't see anything else in this engine that could really have any kind of problems. Nobody else is having any other big issues. Uh, the only thing that's happening is if you can make it past 30, 35,000 miles, then the connecting rod cap problem, you've most likely dodged that. But you're not going to dodge this. So, you know, I hope everything works out on this. And um, if it does, then, you know, I don't see any reason why I can't hit my target mileage of 300,000 and 600,000, which is my goal. So... You know, you see all the parts in this. The best thing to do is to get it to a shop that can bulletproof this engine. Um, you know, I hate to say it, but I, I was hoping that we wouldn't have to have any kind of bulletproof stuff. But, you know, while everybody else is putting on air intakes and, and uh, figuring out ways to make more horsepower out of the motor, this shop has to figure out how to make my engine better. <laughs> so... Um, so there you have it right now. This is an update. Uh, it's November uh, 9th, Monday, November 9th, and uh, this is where we're at so far. So, thanks.